Hi, this is John Coro. Welcome to this week's Auspicious Agile video blog. As always, if you like uh, the Auspicious Agile video blogs, please like, subscribe, and share on YouTube and also on Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and uh, Instagram. And uh, sign up for the, uh, click the bell to get alerts on the latest uh, blogs and video blog entries. This week, we're going to continue our blockchain series on what is cryptocurrency. We're going to be taking a look at what are the different cryptocurrencies? You probably hear a lot about this, and we're going to try to make it a little easier to understand what cryptocurrency really is all about. Uh, before we do that, I need to give a disclaimer here, so I'm going to give you a moment to read that disclaimer now, uh, and then we'll go ahead and continue in to learn more about what cryptocurrency is all about. So please read the disclaimer. Great, so let's get into what cryptocurrency is. Simply stated, cryptocurrency is really just internet money. Um, we had the internet first, we have personal computers, and now we have cryptocurrency, which is along with the blockchain. You can see the previous Auspicious Azure video blog on that topic. You basically have internet money. So this is money that you don't really have physical coins, you just use it online. Uh, you can use it to buy any product or service or anybody else except uh, the different uh, cryptocurrencies you can use to buy from them as well. Now, that means you could buy a pizza. The first purchase or one of the first purchases of Bitcoin was actually a pizza for like 10,000 Bitcoin. If you had that much today, you'd have about $90 million, somewhere in there. Um, you can also buy e-commerce products online. Uh, you can do shopping or go to stores or physical locations that will accept Bitcoin in many countries and many places they do. Uh, you can buy your coffee or your latte using a Bitcoin. You could even buy a car from somebody with a Bitcoin if they would accept Bitcoin or uh, purchase in cryptocurrency. Uh, so there's many cryptocurrencies. Or you could even get a space tourism flight on uh, Virgin Galactic, which I think the Winklevoss twins uh, had actually, uh, they're going to purchase a space tourism flight uh, using Bitcoin. Now, also in cryptocurrency, you have miners. Now, miners are people who actually are basically the accountants for the cryptocurrency. And they're the ones who make sure the transactions are verified and correct and uh, honest transactions. So there's usually a large number of people who do this. And when you hear the term miner, they basically are the accountants that make sure that this is the accurate information like a bank would do for traditional transactions. Now, probably the most famous of all of the cryptocurrencies, of course, is Bitcoin. You're going to see me using three or four letter abbreviations. Bitcoin's abbreviation is BTC. Uh, you can use this to look them up on CoinMarketCap and other websites to find out more information about the different cryptocurrencies. Now, Bitcoin has been around since 2009, uh, roughly late 2008, 2009, uh, and the first transactions were done. They had the Genesis block, as they call it at that time. And Bitcoin is often considered digital gold. It is a store of value uh, and is probably the best known of all the cryptocurrencies and the first of them. Now, for some reasons, it does have some weaknesses in terms of it is slow. It only does seven transactions per second, basically. Visa does, I think, about 10,000 transactions per second. And also, it's very high in price. So I think it's about $9,000 or somewhere thereabouts right now, which is a lot for a single coin. But there are a lot of other altcoins, we call them, uh, that are other cryptocurrencies. We're going to look at those. So here are some for transaction speed. The first one is called Litecoin. Now, Litecoin is a coin that basically uses the same blockchain and the same code as uh, Bitcoin, uh, but basically it's been made much faster. So they use that uh, code to basically create their currency, and Litecoin is a much faster version uh, that can be used often uh, alongside in transactions where you might want to use a Bitcoin. Now, Ripple is another one. It's owned by a private company. It's one of the fastest growing cryptocurrencies, and Ripple is actually third in market cap. Um, you can find that on CoinMarketCap, and they are growing quite quickly, actually. They're used for inter-country transactions and banking transactions. Next, we're going to get into smart contracts and the ecosystem. Now, Ethereum is the most famous, second highest market cap of all the altcoins, as we call them, and all the cryptocurrencies. And Ethereum is used for smart contracts. It's from you've probably heard. We'll probably look into that more. It's used for purchasing ICOs and writing distributed uh, distributed ledger technology, distributed applications, dApps as we call them. Uh, it's very popular. It's used to buy ICOs, and so it's uh, very high in value, and it's also has a lot of momentum behind it. Neo is another project. 
Uh, this one is basically China's version of Ethereum. It's also been gaining some momentum. It's currently sitting somewhere around number 10 in market cap overall. Uh, and it is uh, used a lot more in China currently than it is in other countries. Um, but it is definitely a project that's been gaining momentum and attention. And another one is called EOS. Now, EOS is something that has basically a the same idea of having an ecosystem that is able to have high performance, it's scalable, and it has parallel chains. I mean, it can have parallel blockchains running at the same time. Uh, EOS is also... Uh, the number five coin in terms of coin market capitalization right now. Now, privacy coins is another category of cryptocurrencies. As it turns out, people say, oh, well, you know, Bitcoin is used for crime a lot and that kind of thing. Actually, crypto, uh, Bitcoin can be tracked fairly easily today. Uh, so it's not as private as people might think. So these other coins are created, so Monero being one of them, to make private transactions. Let's say you have medical uh, transactions you want to do or you want to do something for medicine or other things that you don't want people to know necessarily, uh, you want to keep it private, Monero would be one of the coins that you could use uh, to do that, to have private transactions. Another one is called Zcash, uh, created by a guy named Zuku uh, and his team. Uh, and Zcash is another fairly well-known and highly rated uh, privacy coin, uh, a little behind Monero. Monero sits at number 12 in market cap, and I think Zcash is number 25. Another one is called uh, Zcoin, which is also... Like uh, Zcash uses what we call zero knowledge proofs and uh, is used as a, pre a privacy coin. So you don't have to give any information in order to do a secure transaction um, on the blockchain. Um, so these are privacy coins and you'll probably see these becoming more valuable as people start to track transactions on the blockchain. Now next up we have cash alternatives. Cash alternatives include the most famous of them, which is Bitcoin Cash. This is a fork or a split from uh, Bitcoin. And this uh, is the fourth highest market cap cryptocurrency right now. Uh, it's been gaining quite a bit of momentum as well. It uh, has a good amount of value. And basically the idea is it transacts a lot faster than Bitcoin. So you could use this for transactions where maybe you couldn't use uh, a Bitcoin. And also Dash, which they call digital cash, is another that is also for transactions and to be able to buy and sell. Now, have to realize, depending on where you live, there are tax implications to using these different things as digital cash. So you want to be aware of that and consult with uh, a professional on that. Now, other altcoins as well. Um, we'll talk about a few others as well, as there are many. Stellar, which is for banking payments. There is Walt Chain, which has become popular for Internet of Things. IOTA, which is, again, for the Internet of Things. Quash, which is for liquidity. And Omisigo, which is financial inclusion and becoming popular and quite an interesting project as well. Now, I cannot cover all the coins in this video. It would just take way too long. There's probably, I think, over 1,500 um, different cryptocurrencies currently, uh, but you can look at those on CoinMarketCap. I've tried to cover some of the top coins, uh, probably the top 20, 25, uh, some from that range, and certainly the top 10, uh, so that you're able to get an idea of what the different types of cryptocurrency are and uh, what they're good for, what they're used for. Now, in addition to that, there is a side note, and the side note is that these cryptocurrencies, our uh, token is actually different from a coin. A coin has its own blockchain, like uh, Bitcoin or Ethereum, where a token basically uses the blockchain of one of the coins, so it's not its own. So many of these tokens we call ERC-20 tokens, they use for ICOs. Uh, these tokens actually use Ethereum's blockchain, and they don't have their own blockchain. Now, another note. I want to make for you for the next time that we're going to be uh, getting ready to continue the blockchain series. Uh, so some extra information here. We are going to, of course, have for you more information about uh, cryptocurrency exchanges and wallets, which is where you store your cryptocurrency. We'll talk a bit about ICOs, initial coin offerings, and also the regulation, which is developing a lot right now in this space. And it's really quite important that regulation is developing. Uh, so we'll look at that as well and things like taxes also. Now... That said, we are, as always, please like, subscribe, share, and sign up for alerts on YouTube, and uh, like and subscribe and share as well for Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, and Instagram. You can support Lost Vicious Agile blogs on Amazon and on Patreon. You can find links for that below, and you can also find links for other uh, references and referral links for the different um, exchanges for cryptocurrencies, as well as for coin market cap and news sources that I like and other YouTubers that uh, do the uh, stories about cryptocurrency on a pretty much a daily basis, and I think are a good source of information. 
That said, as always, stay agile, and I hope you got some great information about uh, cryptocurrency and uh, a good introduction uh, to it as well. And thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.